Before we start this video, I just want to let you guys know that as I'm recording this, it is insanely hot in my room because it's summertime, and the only thing that I have to keep me cool is this, which is super loud. And I assume you guys don't want to hear that in the background of the entire video. That's right, I'm a Gen 2 user now, and I'm not ashamed of it. I got a new laptop, and as you can see, uh, it is 20 cores, and the frequency is 4.6 gigahertz. Now, I wouldn't run Gen 2 on a ThinkPad, that would be miserable, but on something like this, well, why not? So, I also would like to say, I found a new ThinkPad, so that is going to, uh, it's a ThinkPad, T510, by the way. I'm gonna run Arch on that. My ThinkPad T420 is still gonna run OpenBSD. I'm gonna have this running Gen 2. So we're really running all the best that we can. I'm gonna just like to say a few things about Gen 2. Honestly, I think Gen 2 is actually pretty great. Uh, before, I was really, I had a sort of aversion uh, to it because you had to compile all the packages, which is, it's still kind of a hassle. But once you set up all your use flags and you really start to like know what you're doing with it, Gen 2 is so great, it's fast, there are certain tricks you can do to like speed up compile times. I have um, seven simultaneous jobs running at any given time, whenever I'm compiling, which is nice. Um, but as you can see, I only have 16 gigs of memory, I guess it's saying 15 up here, whatever. Um, and that's kind of annoying, that really limits how much, uh, how many jobs I can run. Now, the documentation, it says, take the number of gigabytes of memory, divide by two, that's how many jobs you should run in unison. But it seems like whenever I'm compiling, I only use like three gigs of memory, so I might up that number eventually. Anyways, Gen 2, I think it is pretty great. Um, not much to say about it, honestly, but everything that I used to do, or I guess still do on OpenBSD and other Linux distributions, still works on here. It takes a little bit of extra work to configure, but I like the fact that I have a very granular amount of control over my system now, as opposed to something like Arch, where if you have a package, if you want to change what features it's compiled with, let's say FFmpeg, I'm not sure what it's compiled with on Arch, but let's say it doesn't have, uh, let's say like the VPX library. Now, I'm sure it does, I'm just using it as an example. Uh, but if I wanted to make a VP9 WebM uh, on Gen 2, I literally just go into a file and put VPX. Well, I put, uh, what is it, like, media-something-slash-ffmpeg, and then put VPX. Um, on Arch, I'd have to go, and I'd have to download the source code, and then I'd have to configure it, and then I'd have to find, like, the options in the make file and stuff, and then I'd have to compile. Who wants to do all that? Use flags are so useful in Gen 2. I guess that's why they call them use. Anyways, um, that was a, that was a horrible joke. Regardless, uh, I also started using System D. Now I know System D. Everybody's like, "Oh, System D is the bad guy." I disagree. Okay, I used to think System D was bad. I started using OpenRC. Didn't really like it. And then I started using Run It. I actually did like that a lot. Um, OpenBSD. I guess it has RC, I don't even know what it is, it's like its own thing, so you, I think OpenRC is supposed to be a port of it from OpenBSD to Linux, but at that point I ended up just doing most of my login stuff through either the bash RC or through xinitRC, but now there are certain things where it's actually better to do them through systemd because then you can guarantee they start up on boot with certain options. And then you can use system CTL to restart or kill them or disable them. And so I added some of the uh, services to my dot files and it's very easy um, to get some of them running. Like I've written a few daemons, like my weather alert daemon, you might see it pop up during this video, who knows. But that allows uh, me to just literally type, I'll show you, I'll go to, uh, let me zoom in here. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have weather alert D running right now. So I'll do system, CTL dash dash user status weather alert D. Uh, as you can see, it is running right now, but I could kill it if I wanted to. 
So I could do, uh, let's see here, stop. And now it's done. So if we look here, alert D, it's no longer running. And then to start it, I would just run start. All right, if I wanted to disable it, say, it would just be disable weather alert D and it all run, oops, it all runs off of basically like sim links. And so as you can see, if I just do, I'm just gonna do this honestly, uh, D I S and there we go. And that enabled it. So, and obviously from here, all I'd have to do is dash a start or whoops, it's not what I meant to do. User start and then weather alert D. So this is a much easier method of running services than most other things uh, with Linux. This sim system D actually makes it simple. Yes, it really it is getting a little bit too big. I mean, it, has, it does everything with logging and then network resolving. I don't think it should be doing all that, but starting up the system and then I guess running daemons and services, that's pretty good. Um, I also kind of use it for cron jobs because I don't have a cron daemon installed. I thought cron was just kind of part of Linux, and I didn't realize that's something that just comes installed on most systems. You actually have to install cron or whatever cron daemon you want because there's not any sort of standard. Um, you have to install it for yourself on Gen 2. I opted to just use systemd's timers, which it does the exact same thing, but I already have systemd installed, so why not? Anyways. It's just another short video. Um, I have more videos coming. At the end of every single video I make, I always say, oh, I have more videos coming, more videos coming. I really do. I just need to honestly make them. Um, well, I already have most of them made. It's more that I need to edit them, make a thumbnail, and post them. Uh, I don't know when this one will go up. As you can see, it's, uh, I guess, the morning of June 28th um, at 1 a.m., but... This will probably go out in like July or something. Who knows? Anyways, have a nice night or morning, evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is. Um, I'm going to be enjoying Gen 2. I'll be on this for a while, I think. I think I'm going to stick with Gen 2. Um, oh, yeah. One more thing I meant to mention. This is probably going to be a couple more minutes. Um, Emacs. I use Emacs now, too. So I've... I, I use Gen 2 now, I use System D, I use Emacs, I'm really using all the Soyware now. Um, but not just regular any other regular old Emacs, I'm using Doom Emacs. Um, ignore the fact that I have so many buffers open down here, I don't even, I don't even know what all those are. Anyways, um, but if you don't know about Doom Emacs, what it has, it has, uh, basically just makes Emacs really easy, it configures pretty much everything for you, so it's basically just an IDE. My big thing is the org agenda and the calendar functions. I'm going to try and use those a lot for when I get to college. I'll keep myself organized, and I like using my computer. So, you know, the best of both worlds. Um, but it also has a Vim emulation layer called Evil, so I don't have to give up any of my Vim commands or keybinds or anything. Uh, I really just have to configure it. I have to rewrite my Vim RC in Lisp, basically. Um, but this makes it so easy to switch from Vim to Emacs. So if you're looking um, to go for something a little less minimal, but gives you a lot more functionality, then I'd recommend going with Emacs. Now, if I'm just editing like a config file real quick, like I'm gonna go and do vim slash etsy slash uh, portage slash make.conf. Okay, if I'm editing a config file real quick, I'm just gonna go in here with Vim, but if I'm actually doing like programming of some sort, it's a lot more helpful to do it with Emacs. Anyways, I think that's the end of the video now. Um, hopefully you guys got something from this, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, also, um, I think I'm like 60 hours away, from, 60 view hours away from getting monetized. Um, I'm not sure what the plan is for monetization, whether or not I'll actually use the money for anything or if I'll just save it. Um, I don't even know if it'll be, it's, it's, I think you get like $1 for every thousand views or something, so it's nothing, but I think it'd be cool if I put the money towards something that like accumulated, like if I took all the money and invested it or something, I think that'd be cool. Anyways, um, this is actually the end of the video. Um, 
And I said that like three times before. Uh, I don't even know why, whatever. My videos on YouTube, they're horrible. I don't even know why people subscribe to me. Uh, last video was completely a joke, although I guess, I guess this is sort of the follow up to that because I talked about using Emacs in this. Yeah, I I'm just rambling at this point. Anyways, end of the video. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.